do glasses change the shape of people's faces? I don't know if that's secretly why I never caught them. <laughs> My name is Chris Jordan, and I'm from Tacoma, Washington. Experimental optics for me is a kind of a through line between everything, between painting and photography and sculpture and interactivity uh, that really allows me to be myself. It's that play and these relationships between media that I'm super excited about. With optics, you get to make people aware of their own perception. You know, you get to be make people aware of their perspective on things. And that that perspective is unique. Yo, I, it was really roundabout for me getting into art. I started out making websites for my friends. I was so into that in middle school. And one day I made something that I didn't know what to do with. I was like, what is this? I don't know what it is. And then I discovered there was such thing as digital art. A friend of mine named Kenji Stoll showed me how to use spray paint when we were in high school. So I went straight from digital art to painting murals. A few years ago, I was in Trinidad and Tobago working on some murals with youth in the community. We didn't have access to spray paint, so I just had to um, grab some paint brushes. <laughs> and then it came out, and it was like really, it came out really cool. And, um, and that was life changing for me, you know, because um, I hated brushes. <laughs> in terms of material and everything, it's always like one thing into the next, it bleeds into the next, it bleeds to the next. So that's kind of how I'm here, doing like stuff with optics and manipulation of light. I'm interested in like breaking the fourth wall in painting, playing with the separation between perception and reality and making people aware of how much filtration goes into um, what they see. I think about how the kinds of stories that we encounter in life are a byproduct of the kinds of infrastructure that is built around stories and around people. It's insane. <laughs> I've been really interested in glass for a long time. I grew up across the alley from this um, salvage yard called Jones Glass um, that has thousands and thousands of windows. And they come from all these different places, and then they wait around in this medium space, and then they're gonna go to new homes later. And I guess the, the windows are like a diaspora in their own way, you know? They just kind of hang out in this environment and they just chill until they end up in another house. There's something really, I don't know, inspiring to me about them. And so when I came here to the museum, I was thinking about more ways to, to play with the idea of windows and seeing through things and how it transforms images and stories. So we're making these like very nebulous sculptural forms that are like covers for paintings that will like modify the paintings but also kind of be sculptural paintings in and of themselves. So we're blowing these modified bubbles that kind of twist and contort over the shape of a painting. And they have their own color in them, so they'll, they'll play with the painting, they'll kind of dance with the painting across the surface. I think for me as a collaborative artist who's working in community so commonly, it's exhilarating, but also super refreshing to switch that role around to a place where like, this community of artists is working with me. And I get the benefit of having that attention and care and support to embrace this bizarre vision that I'm introducing and say, yeah, we can do that. I feel insanely spoiled having a team with this level of expertise to usher in my visions in my very first time working in glass because I get to focus on my ideas and they focus on making them reality. And we, and we bounce back and forth and that is like pure bliss for me.
but I'm gonna get some glasses soon. <laughs>